I think one of the one of the key things for most historians and for us was the letters of Pliny the Younger, um, who actually witnessed the uh, the explosion um, and recorded it all. And he wrote a series of letters describing it over the couple of years after the the eruption. And uh, those letters are very very descriptive. Um, they detail the falling ash. Uh, they detail the fire. They detail the Bay of Naples with the water draining, which is where we, we of course, get our tsunami and tidal wave from. Um, so he provided quite an accurate description of what the disaster was uh, in fairly broad terms. And in fact, you know, he was so descriptive that for a long time, um, no one really took him seriously. They thought he kind of made a lot of this stuff up because no one believed that a disaster of this kind could actually happen. I was a huge fan of Kit from Game of Thrones. Um, Game of Thrones is something that uh, my wife and I became obsessed with. And we came to it late, actually. Um, I, the first two seasons had already run. And uh, we, I, we got it on iTunes and just watched all of the episodes back to back, I think, in two days. And it's a terrific show, and it's got a terrific cast. But for me, there was one person who I felt really popped, and, I, I, and that was Kit. And I felt this guy. This guy looks like a movie star. He's really, he really stood out from the ensemble. And um, I met him and uh, I was continued to be very impressed by him. And uh, he wasn't the gladiator that, that we needed, uh, but he assured me that he would get there. And he became very disciplined and very focused on kind of getting that gladiatorial physique, uh, which is what you see in the movie. I think we're making a disaster movie, and if you're to believe the disaster and to believe that people are really in jeopardy and that this, this destruction is really happening, it has to be realistic. You know, there, there were two ways we could have gone about making this movie. There was the kind of like, the way we did it, which was we built big sets and we shot on them for real and we had ash falling and we had real flame, we had people on fire running around. Obviously there's computer generated images in the film, but we tried to give everything a basis in reality. And, and even the physics of the computer-generated stuff is real. You know, the, it's not kind of cartoony. You know, it's like when a rock falls, it falls at the right speed. It falls at the right velocity. It really looks like a rock. And if it hits someone on the head, they react the way they would do if they really got hit by a rock. There's nothing kind of cartoony about it. There's no wire work in the movie. Um, there's no overly elaborate stunt work. It's all real. And I think that gives you an investment in the movie and in the characters that you wouldn't have if you didn't believe it. Uh, because obviously the other way to make the movie is kind of just to shoot everything against a green screen and go for a kind of 300 style film. But for me that's, that's a spectacle but that's a very kind of comic book spectacle and it's not what we were trying to do. It's definitely, I mean, you, you have to build a lot more, um, but I think that's good for two things. Um, a lot of the shots in the movie are totally real. Um, you know, on a movie of this scale, I think you would normally imagine, most people would imagine it has about 2,000 visual effect shots in it. We only have 500 visual effect shots in the movie. And one of the reasons for that is we could shoot a lot of the movie practically on set, for real. And that's why it was so unpleasant for the actors, because quite often we'd have a whole street and it would be filled with flame and explosions and ash falling. And it was, you know, would it have been easier for the actors just to kind of run around in front of a green screen with nothing? Yes, of course it would. But would you have really got those performances? I don't think so.